Hi, I'm Dave Karger. Welcome back to TCM. In the early 1930s, Universal became Hollywood's leading producer of horror movies thanks to the success of landmark films like Frankenstein, Dracula, and the movie that's up next. From 1933, it's The Invisible Man. This is an adaptation of a chilling science fiction story by H.G. Wells about a scientist who invents an invisibility serum and then goes mad with power when he tests it on himself. The Invisible Man was directed by James Whale, who had also directed Frankenstein at Universal two years earlier. Originally, the man who had played Frankenstein's monster, Boris Karloff, was slated to play the title character in The Invisible Man, but Karloff walked away from the project after studio executives repeatedly tried to get him to forego a pay raise that he had been promised. For James Whale, losing Karloff wasn't really a problem. From the start, he had a different actor in mind to play The Invisible Man, Claude Rains. Rains was an established stage actor and a respected teacher at the Royal Academy of Dramatic Arts, where his students included John Gielgud and Charles Lawton. But Rains had only appeared on screen once before, in a silent film back in 1920. Universal Studio head Carl Lemley was unwilling to take a risk on an unknown actor, but James Whale didn't give up. He knew that whoever played the Invisible Man had to have a resonant voice that would carry the picture, since the character is hardly ever seen. Rather, he's mainly heard throughout the film. Claude Rains had the right voice, and he got the part. From 1933, also with Gloria Stewart, William Harrigan, Henry Travers, and Una O'Connor, here is The Invisible Man. The special visual effects in The Invisible Man were particularly advanced for 1933, including stop-motion animation, double exposures, and scenes that required Claude Rains to stand in front of a black velvet background and wear the same material under his bandages so that he would appear to be invisible. For Rains, this movie turned out to be an auspicious start to his Hollywood career. He had appeared in one other film back in 1920, but for all intents and purposes, The Invisible Man was his big screen debut. After this, his career took off and continued steadily for another three decades. He went on to earn four Oscar nominations as Best Supporting Actor in the 1930s and 40s for Mr. Smith Goes to Washington, Casablanca, Mr. Skeffington, and Alfred Hitchcock's Notorious. Reigns made his final film appearance in 1965, playing King Herod in George Stevens' epic, The Greatest Story Ever Told. Up next, Jacqueline Stewart is here with our Saturday Night Spotlight on Bruce Lee. She's joined by actor and martial artist Mark Dacascos, who you might know from his stint as the host of Iron Chef America and his starring role in John Wick Chapter 3 Parabellum. Tonight, they're kicking off our primetime lineup with Bruce Lee's final film. Don't go away. Next on TCM, enter the dragon, then game of death, and later, strange bargain. Wish upon a noir with TCM Today.